Shalom on Bill of our praise to Yahweh Shem and Shabbat Shem and Kakodash. Even our praise to Yahweh Shem and Shabbat Shem and Kakodash. Now we find Kal Halal Yam La Yahweh Shem and Shabbat Shem and Kakodash. Shalom to all the uh, potential elect out there. So let me get right into it. And I'm going to entitle this video Does Acts 15 verse 17 contradict what Amos uh, 9 and 12 says? Now somebody had uh, commented that they wanted me to do a breakdown on uh, Acts 15 and they did it before they left the comment before but I forgot about it. I did mention Sometimes people leave me comments notice, and there's notifications and I forget. So I believe it's the same individual asked the second time. So I'm gonna go into this. And I did a couple of videos. I went into James 15, but I didn't go into the whole chapter. But the key point Because pretty much all of this, it says the, the council at Jerusalem, right? Concerning being saved, if only if you're set, uh, uh, if you're, um, you know, circumcised. So I don't know if he's talking about this. You know, when you read from the first verse on down, it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So I want to go. I want to go to ten for a uh, thirteen verse, sorry, and then read down. If you have any other points, because I believe you're trying to get at this here, because like I said, most of uh, Acts ten chapters is uh, self-explanatory. But this is the part right around right about here, starting from the 13 verse, 17 verse, all these verses is a little controversial. And this is something that Christians can use to say, you know, to go back to uh, the Old Testament, which is uh, the book of Amos. And they can say, well, see, the most I always wanted the Gentiles to have an op opening, especially Esau. So we're going to do that. And like I said, if, if you have any other part, just like I said, for the third time, James 15 is self-explanatory. This, this part will be hard to explain when you uh, bring in Amos 9. So anyways, it's James, James' judgment, right? This is 13 verse, Acts 15, verse 13. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, You know what I got to do? Let me do this. Right here in the fifth verse, there were certain Pharisees that believed me and believed in the Lord, saying that it was needful to, circ to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Which ultimately, when you come and when you grow into this truth, you ultimately grow with the laws. You don't just come into this thing and just start keeping the laws, you got to grow into this thing. You got to know that you're an Israelite, number one, and then you got to, you know, understand who who became the, the savior for you, and then you grow. You can't take a man that's been in this thing. The scriptures call him a novice. He's been in this thing for a month, and all of a sudden he's a top teacher, or even a year. You have to grow in this thing. That's why a lot of people they uh they fall off. Like a lot of people in IUIC, they fall off. They get disenchanted and they fall off because they don't because they put they put a burden on them to keep this law, keep that law. You're not doing this right. 
the most important laws is not anything, eating anything with blood, don't commit adultery, don't be a, a you know, a mo. Just laws like that. You just can't come in any way you want to come in. So there's certain laws unto death. And then as you grow, then you keep more laws as you grow into this thing. This is the, the problem that uh, the Apostle Paul had with Corinth. Why did he have such a hard time with Corinth? Because, because they went from following the Hellenistic customs and ways into uh, coming into this truth. Why do you think Paul said, like if you go to uh, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14, really the whole First and Second Corinthians. He had a lot of work to do. And um, for example, he said, women are not supposed to teach. Women are not supposed to be opening their mouths. Women should ask their husbands at home. Scriptures also say a woman should have a man. And there's special cases where a woman is, is, uh, doesn't have a man, especially deals with a woman that, that was a, a widow. She's at a certain certain age, and she's part of the help, the work, by helping the brotherhood. That's in Romans uh, chapter 16. And women covering their heads, and men uncovering their heads, and men not having long hair. Because why did they have long hair? And it wasn't like one, one person that had long hair. It was all pretty much all the men that had long, long hair, because they were part of that custom. Just like you got Jake in this system today, the average Jake on the street, they got tattoos all over them. You know, if you if you in the hip hop, if you a you know a drug dealer or whatever, you 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 live that Jake worldly spirit. You know, you got the crazy haircuts, you got the long hair, you got the the tatted up, you know. You know, you wear, you rock the Jordans or whatever, whatever. The yays, you know, you, you, the, the, uh, Jake pretty much dresses according to the fashion of the Jake world, not necessarily the Edomite world, but the Jake world. They dress a certain way. You know, Jake could kill you over, over a pair of damn Jordans, man. And that's all throughout the news. They'll do some, uh, transaction for a pair of, uh, you know, classic uh, old school Jordans that's been preserved because people buy Jordans to preserve them, not wear them, and then to sell them when the price, you know, the price goes up. So Jacob say, well, I want to get him. Let's meet over here. Then the dude pulls out something, stab the guy up or kills the guy and take the Jordan. And that shows you the mentality of our people that they must be destroyed. Our people in that worldly, beastly spirit they must be destroyed. They must be destroyed. You can't rehabilitate them. You can't take them to the kingdom and rehabilitate them. You, you, you have no, you have to kill them. <laughs> That's from, if, if you know where I got that from, from movie, what movie I got that from, you're good. All right? You can't rehabilitate them. No, you just kill them. Tell me what movie that's from. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you got to have a little fun with this. Okay, so let me, let me, uh, where am I going to start? Like I said, I don't want to just read the whole thing. I just want to get to the point. Uh, but there arose a certain of this uh, sect of the Pharisees, which believe. What does that mean, which believe? There were Pharisees and scribes that said, yeah, I, be I, I believe he's a Messiah. So you got people that are saying, you guys are scribes and Pharisees. Well, guess what? Paul was a, was a scribe, even when he followed the Lord. He said he still was a scribe. He was considered a scribe, a Pharisee, rather. And he said his father was a Pharisee. And he was trained in the law by his father. His father took another Pharisee slash scribe named Gamaliel to teach Paul the, the law, statutes, and the commandments. See, the Apostle Paul came out of a prominent uh, family. 
he he wasn't he wasn't a you gotta understand that Peter and the twelve, some of them were fishermen and so forth. Well well Peter, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they were fishermen and they were following John. Well, the three of them, Peter wasn't following. Remember, Andrew, which was one of the twelve, he he came into this truth before Peter. Peter came in through his brother Andrew, but Peter was the one that was a prominent one out of the 12. Upon this rock, Peter, I will build, build my church. Why? Because the positions were already set in previous lives. Reincarnation. Reincarnation is biblical. For you new, you new ones out there, you Padawans, it says, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the laws of Moses, which that's a good point, but they're coming out of that heathenistic world. So you got to work with them. So it says, uh, uh, what is this, uh, sixth verse, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up. So there was, a, there was an argument. It was a debate. Uh, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago the Most High made choice among us that the Gentiles, meaning the Israelites, they didn't know that they were Israelites. Go back to 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, where Paul had to tell, say women are not supposed to teach, women are not supposed to have authority over the man. Women are to keep silent when the, in, in gatherings. Women are to be married. Uh, women are to ask their husbands at home. Uh, women are to cover it, cover themselves, cover their heads. It says because of the angels, um, men are not supposed to have long hair, which is against nature. So he had to he had to slowly bring them out of that. And they the current the people of the Church of Corinth had a problem giving him, helping him out. And he said, well, I'm going to teach you anyway, whether you give me something or not. That's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And that's a, that, that whole scripture, somebody got to do a video on that. If not, I'll do a video on it. But that says a whole lot made a choice among us that the Gentiles, meaning the Israelites, that were in a Gentile state of mind, and where does that go back to? When you go into the Apocrypha, a main, the main place you go to is to prove that they became gentilized. That's a word that I made up with, gentilized. Gentilized or um, Hellenized or Greekized. It was um, during the time period of uh, Antioch's Epiphany where they forced them. They said, you can't call yourself a Jew. Well, that's, that's what's happening now with the ADL. They're basically telling Kyrie, look, Kyrie better not go to the IUIC because IU, they'll sp suspend his ass again. His act of going to any Israelite group, if he's walking down the street and there's Israelites a block behind him, they'll say, well, wait a minute, you hang in. We saw you hanging with Israelites. So they, con they condemned his ass. They said, you can't be an Israelite going back to Antioch's uh, Epiphanies. I believe that's 2 Maccabees 6. And you can start the 6th verse to the ninth verse. Matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me go to that real quick. To Max. Six. You really, you really should read from the first verse. It's going, going to the point. Okay, fifth verse. For the altar also filled with uh, profane things, which the law for, forbid it. I got to go to the first verse. 
Not long after this, the king sent an old man of uh, Athens to, which was an Israelite. So when you go to Acts 17, when, when Paul spoke to the men of Athens, they were Israelites. You had Israelites living in Athens, Greece, calling themselves Greeks, but they were so-called black people to compel. Uh, not, not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the Jew, the, the, the laws of their fathers. Because this man from Athens, which is an Israelite, uh, he was following the Hellenistic ways. So uh, Antiochus said, well, I, let me get one of them of the same race, but he's Hellenized to talk to these people. The benefits of, of, of uh, you know, following the, the Hellenistic ways. It says that not to live after the laws of the Most High and to pollute also the temple and Jerusalem. What did they ultimately do? They put a, a pig in there. And that's a, that's a dead. He's probably a member of the ADL. And to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus. By the way, Jupiter, you know, you watch these superhero type movies and comics and stuff. Well, back in ancient Greece, you had superheroes. You had Hercules, you had Jupiter. Jupiter was like the head god. And Jupiter was a so-called black man. And all the gods were black. So who, who wrote them stories, those, uh, Helen, those stories during that time period, which is called Greek mythology? Jake wrote them stories, man. You think Esau is going to write a story about Jupiter, the head god, and make him look like a Jake? That's the power and influence that we have. And that's why they're afraid of Kyrie, because he's an influence, influencer. And that... Uh, that in the reason of the Jupiter, the defender of, of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place, the coming in of this uh, mischief was sore and grievous to the people. Fourth verse. For the temple was filled with riot and ra uh, reveling by the Gentiles who so you had a mixture of actual Gentiles and you had Jakes that were following the ways of the Gentiles. So they profaned the temple who dallied with harlots and they had sex in the temple. They defiled the temple and had to do with women within the cir circuit of the holy uh, places and besides that brought in things that were not lawful. Now, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me put in swine. Let me modify it. If you notice, the only time the word swine is written in the Apocrypha is in the Maccabees, 2nd Maccabees and 1st Maccabees. And it's actually in 2nd Maccabees 6. So it said Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man and of a well-favored continence, uh, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. Let me read into this. Do it this way. But he chose rather to die gloriously than to live a stay with such an abomination. He said, I'll die before I eat swine. He did 
So first Maccabees one verse forty seven, and you got to read this first chapter. First uh, Maccabees one, you read the whole chapter. It names names. It names Alexander. It names Alexander's father. It, it names, I believe, it also it, well. It means it names Antiochus. So it names names. Um, it says set up altar, altars, and groves, and chapels of I, of idols, and and sacrifice swine flesh, and unclean beasts. So that's how they defiled the temple. Okay, first, uh, second Maccabees seven verse one. It came to pass also that seven brethren, with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the Lord to taste swine flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. And you can read the rest of that. So this is what these small hats are doing. They're basically saying, look, you, you, better, you better condemn this whole Hebrew-Israelite thing altogether. There's a lot of history, a lot of history in um, the Maccabees. Fifth verse, the altar also was filled with profane things, uh, which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. They couldn't keep the Passover, couldn't keep the Day of Atonement, they couldn't keep the uh, the, uh, uh, the memorial blown of the trumpets, they couldn't keep any of those days. Which Alexander allowed them to keep it. They said, neither, six verse again, neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. What are they doing with Kyrie Irving? They're saying, don't, they don't even want to hear you say that you did. They, they don't want to hear Shalom come out your mouth. So they got him, they got him shook. They shook his ass. And you know what he did? Like I said, he, he's, got a, he's got a $90 million deal with Nike, and he has a $35 million dollar contract I don't know how that works out I don't know how that works out I don't know if it's 30, 35, 35 million a year or 35 million for a number of years my man I checked out is what he's worth and everything but let's say he's let's take the 35 million plus the 90 million that's what that's 100 that's 125 million if you lived for 100 years you can live off a million dollars a year for the next 125 years. So why did he, why did he tuck tail? Why did he bitch up? Because he loves money. The love of money is the root of all evil. So ultimately, he completely sold out. He tried to stand up. None of them jakes really backed him up because they're all insiders. They know what can happen to him, especially if you go up against the Jays. The small hats, they're very powerful. They're the ones that control everything. The, the number one family of the Edomites are these people, man. You got them and the Germans. So he, he they pull him to the side. They said, look, nigga, you better get your mind right. You, get it, you better get some act right because you're going to lose everything. So this man said he chose to, to sell out. He's a sellout. He's a complete, all that riffing that you were doing, brother, talking about I got an army behind me. Well, the, your army came out the other day and you shitted on your army. The IUIC is your army. That was your army. And you shitted on them. I don't want to talk. I just want to talk about basketball. They trained you well, young Padawan. And see, he didn't know what he was getting into. 
he he didn't know he was getting in what he was getting into, man. But he loves money. You could have said, "Look, I'm I'm retiring from the NBA. I'm not playing basketball anymore." Well, you get to you get to ride off in the sun, sun in, in the sunset with your wife and your son uh, Elohim. With 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 a uh, hundred and twenty five million dollars in the bank, you love money. You want more fucking money? That's what it is. That's what it is. Maybe maybe IUIC would know in the future not to hop on a damn bandwagon or some goddamn celebrity, man. Oh, y'all tried it with Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar turned his back on the Israelite. He sh- Kendrick Lamar shitted on you guys. Okay, you went out there. Okay, that's cool. I ain't got no problem with that. You went out there, you spoke, you marched around. You, y'all are Israelites. And that's cool. I don't totally knock y'all. But, get, but it backfired on y'all, man. This guy cho- chose Masa. So it says in the seventh verse, really, this is all we, all we need. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or they bet them ADL, they better not catch you at no Passover with some lamb in your mouth in the springtime because you will be through. Uh, not a fact, um, ancient feast or fast, I'm sorry, fast, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Don't even tell you, don't, I don't, look, you, you out there somewhere where nobody hears you and you say, you know, I'm a Jew. There's going to be a small hat that's going to jump out your damn pocket or the damn tape recorder saying, what did you just say? <laughs> what did you just say, nigga? It says, and then, so they got, so they got him. They got him, man. And then the day of the king's birth, Every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices, which were pig. And when the fast of the, uh, it says fast of Bacchus, it should be feast of uh, Bacchus, were kept. Um, The Jews were compelled to go in possession to Bacchus carrying ivy. And then they put tattoos on him. Uh, in the name of the God, uh, back us, okay? And that's a whole another subject we can get into about Bacchus or uh, Dionysus. That's the God of partying out there. When you niggas go out there club, clubbing, you do it in the spirit of Bacchus. You know, chambering, a re- a re- a reveling, uh, moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their uh, sacrifices. Ninth verse. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. So when you go, let's flash, let's go back to the New Testament. Well, Cornelius, what was Cornelius? Cornelius was a Gentile, but what type of a Gentile? What was his race? Where did his seed go back to? His seed went back to Judah. One of his, when you go back uh, far enough to uh, Cornelius' line, Cornelius, Cornelius' line, his father's father, 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 had to go back to one of these people during the time of... Uh, of uh, to, uh, um, Antiochus' uh, reign, all right? It says, and, 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 and whoso would not conform himself to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present miseries. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children? These when these is what this is back when these women, Israelite women, had integrity. Your the, the, your woman today is your enemy, man. Who, when they had openly led around about the city, in other words, 
they they had the baby circumcised and they and they they flaunted. They said, "Look, I circumcised my baby. The baby's uh, give me a second. The baby's handed at their breast. They cast him down headlong from the wall. So they killed him." Should I read more? And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. When you go into the history during the time of Christopher Columbus and uh, Tor Kamada, uh, the uh, history of the insurrection, what was that called? Is that called the insurrection? Tor Kamada in the... Uh, yeah, I guess that's the insurrection. Help me out. But anyway, um, yeah, I believe that's that's it. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Just to be on the safe side. Tor Kamada. Here goes that devil. It more look like a Jake right here. Could be some evil ass Jake. The Inquisition. That's the word that I wanted. It came to me. But if you go into the history. Okay, it says uh, uh, Torquemada was a Castilian Dominican. A Castilian uh, Dominican, uh, uh, what is this? A friar and first grand inquisitor of the tribunal of the tribunal of the Holy Office, which today is like Roman Catholic back then. A body created in 1478 to up, uphold Catholic religious orthodoxy across the jurisdiction of Castile and Aragon, which is uh, Spain. By the way, the union that, to bring Castile and Aragon together was uh, uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. When they, brought to, when they were brought together, that brought those two kingdoms together, Castile and Aragon. So that's a lot of history right there. I'll be here all day going through the history. And that's what they did back there. When they were two kids, they already said, you know, the king, the current king and the current other king, they would have one would have a daughter, the other one would have a son. And they would they would raise them up so that when they became of age, they would marry each other and co and, and, and cause the two kingdoms to come together and create a bigger kingdom. So, 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 having a daughter was really uh, like having money. If you had twenty daughters, you know, beautiful daughters, that's money right there. You're gonna become, you're gonna become rich. So, daughters didn't have a a, a say in the mat in the matter. They show you that with uh, the king, uh, Lady Diana. She was expected to do certain things, but she became an embarrassment. And they, and they, we don't, we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Okay. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing myself, but that's all right. I went into a lot of history. Look, if you go into the history and go into certain key names, you can go for hours. You can go for hours, and there's no way, there's no way for any for one person to give you all, know all the history. History is vast. So where am I at? Where am I? So I had to do all that. And I'm hope you I hope you're taking notes, uh, vocab. I didn't bring out all the scriptures on the Gentiles, but I brought out the main one or the main couple, but the main one. They, they said, you couldn't, you couldn't call yourself a Jew. You couldn't, you couldn't keep the Sabbath. You couldn't keep any high holy days. 
You had the you had the uh, rebel in the name of Bacchus or Dionysus, and that's what Jake is doing now. You got Jake all throughout these uh, these uh, universities in this country, and they're all fraternities. What does the fr fraternity and the sorority go back to? It goes back to the Greeks, because Jake was heavy into that man. And they made a movie. Uh, Spike Lee made a movie called School Days. If you didn't see that movie, you should see that movie. It shows you exactly what goes on in those colleges and in fraternities. And when, they, when your little girl goes to college, tr trust me, she become a hoe, straight up. They get the, they get the uh, and this is a fact, they will get these pretty little, these pretty girls that go to colleges and they would influence the school directors. They will, they will get you, they will, because they want to re recruit somebody from a high school, right? To go to college. So they, they go to the college and they'll give them money, they'll give them gifts, and then they'll give them women. They'll give them what They showed you that in, uh, what's this movie with Denzel Washington? I forget the name of the movie, but they showed you what the hell, this dude, his son, they got, they got two fine ass Edomite women, you know, to, to, to lay with him. That's what they do. So your women going to these colleges are, are straight up freaks, man. I know, I know how I know how these women get down in the colleges, because I used to go to I used to go to them different colleges. Man, it was the easiest thing in the world to get a damn woman in the college, they, because they're freaks. They're freaky deaky. It says that when they're, but then when they come home, they're proper and got a boyfriend and this, that, and the third. That's all bullshit. You, you, the majority of y'all, you, you, our Israelite women, are a bunch of straight up, straight up hoes. They're straight up hoes because there's no order, and they're wild. That situation down there with Sanquilla, whatever her name is, that's not even on the news, man. They're like wild beasts. So you brothers thinking about getting getting with a woman, you better think twice, man. You better, <laughs> you better read First uh, Corinthians seven chapter and stay away from these women, but they put a damn. Uh, 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 um, a uh, insurance policy on your ass, and all of a sudden you die, and all of a sudden she get she got well, you see, coming she coming to collect. You niggas, be, you negroes better wake up. It says this is not the time to really be all in, into women. And if you get a woman, just have you one woman. You know, like like I U I C. I'm gonna give them props. You just have you one woman. And when, there, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, he's talking to Israelites, ye, ye, ye know how that a good while ago the Most High made choice among us that the Gentiles, which were Israelites race-wise, their lineage goes back to the Israelites, by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So you so are you gonna take this to say that's talking about some somebody from another nation believing? No, it's talking about Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. That's why we use that terminology. That's the best way to describe it. Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. Is you see it all around you every day. And back and back when you go back to the 60s, the 50s, the 40s. Jake didn't have tattoos, man. They didn't have, uh, uh, you know, studs in the air and studs over here. They didn't look like, what's this, what's this nigga, this crazy nigga that played, uh, damn. Damn, Rodman, Dennis Rodman. He, he's, he's, a, he, he's a heathen. He's a heathen, man. He's a fucking heathen. But most of y'all are heathens, man with these crazy haircuts. And I see that all in IUIC, man. They'll get, get on, don't, don't wear pants and all that. But you see guys out there with long hair and they got part of it cut off. They got a design in their hair. Totally off, man. They said that the Gentiles by my, my mouth, should the Israelite foreigners, Israelites and the Gentiles say to mine, uh, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. 
uh, Cornelius was used as an example. He was an ideologue for the rest of the Gentiles. He he believed he saw the Gentile he saw the Israelites doing their works. He was like, how can I get down? He was giving alms. He was praying. He was doing the right thing, and the angel of the Lord came to him. And and the Lord hook, hooked him up with Peter. That's why Peter said, that's why Peter said what he said. And the Most High, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. So now, Vokak can run with this. He can run with this. So we can close the book. No, that's talking about Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. And if you want to get technical, all of us were Gentiles. And put no difference between us and them purifying your hearts by faith. 10th verse. Now therefore, why tempt ye the most? I had to put a yoke upon the next of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear. That goes back into putting a, you got to get circumcised, you got to do this. No, you got to grow. You got to grow. Grow thereby. You got to be rooted and grounded. You got most of these guys that fall off, they might be in this thing for a year or two and then they fall off. And what they do, they go back to being a Baptist because they wasn't rooted, rooted and grounded. 11 verse, and we believe that uh, through the grace of, the, of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, we shall be saved even as they, because they're Israelites. Uh, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders the Most High had wrought among the Gentiles by them, the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. Think of Cornelius. Cornelius was an Israelite. James' judgment, 18 verse, and after, and after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, one of the apostles, men and brethren, Hearken unto me. Simon, meaning Simon Peter, which is his born name, uh, have declared how the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles through who? Go to Acts 10. Read the whole chapter Acts 10. Go to Acts 11. Read the whole after, uh, chapter of Acts 11. Mainly Acts, Acts 10. But read both chapters. Any group, any uh, one West group that's teaching that Cornelius the Edomite Spirit ain't dealing with y'all, period. You better, y'all better get pr fast and pray that the most I open up your eyes. And all you groups should open up or uh, ask the most high to open your open up your eyes to see the karagma. And to disagree the words of the prophets. Uh, what prophets is, is it talking about specifically? It's talking about uh Amos, the prophet. It is written after this. I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. I Meaning he's going to bring the Israelites that were back with, in the generation of David back together. So we call us out the house of David, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, which are Israelites, and all the Gentiles, which are Israelites, upon whom my name is called, Say after the Lord, because Cornelius, whether he's a Judah, he's probably Judah, Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. So his name was called. So they probably said, well, you're a Judite. Okay, the Lord, Yahweh, who doeth all these things. So now, so now, now the scholars say that James said this because he read it out of uh, the, um, uh, the uh, the, uh, Septu the Septuagint and it's written differently. I'm not going to argue that. But when you read this, then you can jump back to Amos and say, see, Edomites are going to be saved. No. And Cornelius was not, well, that proves that Cornelius was an Edomite. No. Known unto the uh, Father are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that he, we that that we trouble not them which 
from among the Gentiles, Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, are turned to the Most High. Because you had a problem with Israelites that were born as Israelites, accepting these people in with the, with the marks, the, the tribal marks, and the crazy haircuts and the bald head, and no hair on their face, and they, and they, they, got, a, they got a pork chop in their hand, they got tattoos over, all over them, and they, and they dress heathenness. So we looked at them as actually being, y'all are, are heathens. But they were not heathen, they were Israelites in a, in a heathen state of mind. But, but that we write unto them that they abstain from uh, pollution of idols and from fornication, which is adultery, doesn't mean anything, it does not mean having sex before you get married. If you have sex before you got married, that means you're married without the ceremony. That, that would mean that Joseph committed fornication uh, with his, with his uh, wife, Mary, and from things strangled and from blood. I don't got to read no more of this. If you have any questions, you want me to read specific, specific verses, go more into specific verses, but the rest of this is pretty much self-explanatory. So now we're going to have to go to Amos. Amos 9. I'm going to go right to the point. Then I'm going to close it. Yeah, there was a video put up by Black, uh, Go Black to Africa. And he had, uh, he had interviewed uh, Ronald Dalton Jr. And I was watching some of it. I got to get some time out to watch the rest of it and uh, critique it. Uh, the restoration of Israel, right? So, so James partially quoted this. Like they said, the scholars say, oh, well, he was reading that as Septuagint. So, well, Septuagint is the Septuagint written in Greek. Where's the evidence that James spoke Greek? Remember, it was said of the 12 um, that they were unlearned men. They weren't schooled in this thing like the Apostle Paul. So it says, Amos 9 11, in that day will I rise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. We're in that day. This is happening as we speak. This is a raising up of the bones and the fountain and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise it up, raise up his ruin, and I will build it as in the days of old. So when David was in power, when David's kingdom was in, in power, did not they have the Edomites in there under them? So that's going to happen again. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Now the remnant of Edom is talking about the, the land of Edom. Because Edom is going to be scattered all over the place to be our slaves. They're not going to have a land to go to. So that's talking about their land. So we're going to take that land. That's going to be an extension of that land that goes back to uh, Genesis 15, from the great river, from the uh, 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 river, from, from one river to the other river, to the other river, from the Red Sea to the to the uh, Euphrates, and of all the heathen or lands, which and also we're going to put them in slavery to eat them. We're going to take the land. We're going to put them in slavery. The other nations, we're going to let them keep their land, but they're going to be up under us. They're going to be our slaves, which are called by my name. Because the Most High uh, established all these names. He, he set up Edom in the land of Edom. It was called the land of Edom because Edomites were living there. But, it, but it's the, the Most High has it in the record, so to speak, that that's the land of Edom, that's the land of Moab. And of all the heathen, starting with the land first, which are called by my name, saith the Lord. It says, uh, let me get ready to close. 13 verse. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the, and the tread of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. 
So let's read that again. Behold, the days come, say of the Lord, that the plowman shall take over, overtake the reaper. The plowman is the one that works out there, that plants the seeds and plows and all that, does the heavy work. And the reaper is the one that benefits from what the plowman does. Now, I did, let me, do, let me see if I can find this. Give me a second. I want to try something. Plow, man. Do with the plow, man, plow all the day to sow. Do if he open and break the clods of his ground, meaning we're the slaves. Um, and this is the, we just read that verse. Now I want to go into the key, the, the root word. Let me see if I can find this again. Bear me for a minute. Let me try it this way. I forget how I, I figured that out, but it was a long time ago. Okay, let me do it this way. Bear me for a minute. I forget how I broke that thing down. can't seem to find it but what it means the plowman is a farmer but you had slaves farm the land and um it was the, it was the owner of the farm or on, the owner of the slaves that reaped the benefits of the work that the plowman did and we represent the plowman so it said the plowman shall overtake the reaper meaning we're going to you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take them down and we're gonna we're gonna be in the position of the reaper and they're gonna be the plow men so ultimately you know this man is going into captivity and why because it was set up by the heavenly father whether they put us in slavery or not but they put us in slavery. He that leaves in the captivity shall go into captivity. What does Isaiah 14, 1 and 2 say? There's many precepts. There's many precepts on, you know, a payback, reciprocity. You reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. And they're afraid of that. They're scared. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom.